Hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. We are back out on the Gulf State Park Pier. It's a gorgeous day here in South Alabama. And I do have some live bait. Check it out. Got some live bull minnows. But mom is with me and she did bring some shrimp as well. And some filler crabs. So how about y'all come join me? Let's get out on the pier and let's get to fishing. Okay, we've paid, got to our fishing spot here on the State Park Pier. And I'll show you what rig I'm using. This is a Carolina rig. So on my main line, I have a half ounce egg weight that can freely slide up and down. Coming to a barrel swivel, and I have about a foot and a half of eight pound fluorocarbon leader because this water's so clear that you need a little bit longer leader to try to fool these fish because they have really good eyesight in clear water and bright blue skies. And then same thing with the hook and a real tiny size eight owner Mewtwo light circle hook. Now the setup I'm throwing this on is a 2500 Shimano Stratic. 10 pound Yozuri Super Braid and a seven and a half foot St. Croix Avid Shore Rod. This one is a medium fast. Let's go ahead and get a bait out. So this is our bait of choice. It is a frisky live bull minnow that we purchased from a local tackle shop. And all I did was take that circle hook and go through the top of their lip and come out and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and drop it down and see if we can get us a big old flounder, redfish or whatever we can catch. All I like to do with these Especially on a day like today, these fish like to hang around structure. So there's many pilings on the pier. And so I'm gonna drop this bull minnow right down beside one of them. Like to let it sink to the bottom. And then what I like to do is open my bail and put my finger on the line so I can feel the bite. Let's play this game of patience and see what is willing to bite our bull minnow. I don't know if I have something or if I'm hung up. No, oh, it just felt a little heavy for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you got one? Set the hook, set the hook. Set the hook. What do you think you got? Oh, it's break Here, go left. It's not gonna break your rod. Yeah, bring it left. Hey, let me get the net for mom. Mom's hooked into something good. You got it, use your rod. You got it. Remember, come this way, come left. Like, you come left, because that piling's right there. You got 10 pound test, okay. You got it. Come on. Just stay right where you are. Okay, now reel down on it. Now pull up. Reel down on it, reel down. Pull up. Sheep's head, that's a big sheep's head too, holy crap. It's not moving. Okay, ready? That's a big sheep's head. I am, I am, I'm trying. I don't okay. see him. Here, bring it left. Right there. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that was challenging. That's a big old sheep's head. You can reel in your one. slack. I think I put a 10 pound leader on yours. 10 pounds yeah. scared me. Woo, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. That's a keeper. That's a good one. Heck yeah. Check out that circle hook right in the corner of its mouth. Mom has the same exact setup I'm using because I tied it for her. <laughs> Perfect set set. Yeah. Yeah, that's a I'll good one. You want to hold them? Second. Check out the chompers on those. That's why they call them sheep's head because their head's all rounded and they have some serious molars on there. <laughs> See if we can raise their lip. Get those teeth out. That's what they used to eat the crabs and barnacles and everything else. Beautiful sheep's head. That's a good one. Good job on that. But they have to be 12 inches to the fork, which this one is more than legal, but that means from the tip of their face all the way to the fork in their tail. They have to measure out to be 12 inches, but this one, I mean, this one's a big sheep's head, so it's a Those keeper. so cute. That one ate a filler crab, did it? I think that's what you were yes, using was a filler crab. crab. They cannot resist filler crabs. They're crustacean eaters, as you can see from their teeth. They eat crabs, barnacles, ghost shrimp, regular shrimp, any type of crustacean. They, uh, they don't mind eating, and they have a really good meat. But we're going to toss this one in the cooler. Heck yeah, good job. Thank you. That was a good fish though. That was a, that was pulling you pretty good. But this is the bait that mom is using. It's a fiddler crab, which you can pick up at local tackle shops or go catch yourself. But it's usually too much trouble to do that. But we bought these at a local tackle shop and uh, they just cannot resist these fiddler crabs. All right, mom just caught that nice sheep's head. And so she caught it on a fiddler crab, but I'm gonna drop down a live shrimp. Oh, frisky thing. But I got this shrimp drop down a bite on my shrimp and as soon as i turn on the camera <laughs> oh i got it i got a circle oh there we go oh dang it that was a good fish 
what look what that was. <laughs> Just got bit off. Let me drop that back down. I know exactly what that was. Oh, got it. Got it. Mm. <laughs> got it. You want to get the net for me, please? I think I got a sheep's head. Oh, man. I got a flounder on. Hey, that might be a keeper. I don't know. You don't need the net. Okay. I thought I had a sheep's head bite, and I dropped that half bitten shrimp back down and just came up with this flounder. They have to be 14 inches in Alabama. I highly doubt he's gonna make 14. He is right at 12 inches. But a beautiful little flounder, and check out where that circle hook is, right in the corner of its mouth. So we're gonna be able to let this one go without much harm to it. And maybe it'll get bigger next year and we can catch it again. All right, buddy. Check that out though. They're so cool. They have both eyes on the same side of their head. Beautiful colors. He's right back down to the bottom again. <laughs> that was cool. He's kind of slipped out of my hand, but he's back down. All right, let's see what else we can get. That's pretty good. So we got a flounder and a sheep's head, short. but it just wasn't a keeper. They got to be 14 inches in Alabama. So he was right at that 12 inch mark. Hmm. Dang it. Am I stuck? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm stuck. Ah. Dang, I'm gonna have to retie. <laughs> that one's stuck pretty good. All right. Yeah, yeah, time to retie. Dang it. All right, well, I'm seeing a sheep's head real shallow. When they're shallow like that in this clear water, it is extremely difficult to get one to eat, but maybe we can increase our odds by providing a nice, healthy filler crab to it. Sorry, buddy, but maybe you can catch me something. I don't know where that one went. That was a decent one. He must be eating ghost shrimp, you know, on the bottom. All right, we just see one on this piling. Ooh, this is going to be hard to get him to bite. You still see him? Oh, yeah, I see him. Oh, there, there's a couple right there. There, my crab's right there. Maybe he'll come up on it. It's going deeper. Please come eat it. That's a smaller one. That's a bigger one right there. I think he's munching on my crab. I don't, I don't know if I want to move it or not yet. He's literally right on that bait. Oh, he took it. No problem. Look at that. That oh, thing, that thing there. took it right in front of me. <laughs> All right, well, the fishing is extremely slow. So I got a pretty cool idea because the water is really clear. And this could, uh, this could turn out bad if, if my line breaks, but I got a, my GoPro Hero 8 tied onto my rod. I'm gonna drop it down below these pilings just to, just to see what's down there, see what's sitting down there. On days like this where it's kind of slow, even though mom caught a nice fish and I caught a little flounder, is curious to see what's sitting down there. You know, are they just not biting or are they just not there? So I'm gonna go ahead, turn my GoPro on. There we go. You gotta have patience with GoPros. And uh, let's go ahead, drop it down and uh, see what happens here. It's been a little bit so hopefully that was some pretty cool footage but i'm gonna pull it up from here and go a little deeper drop it down and see what we pick up over there as well but here's the gopro <laughs> all right so we're a little bit deeper over here on the t and let's go ahead drop it on i just turned it on again so it is on and let's drop it down 
This is about 15-ish feet of water. And see what's down here. This is where mom caught her sheep set at, and then I caught that little flounder. I'm kind of curious. Can't wait to get home and look at the footage, if it did pick up anything. All right, so I dropped it down. I'll probably leave it down there a few minutes just to see what swims around it, if anything. Still makes me feel a little nervous dropping one of my cameras down there. <laughs> I only have two. But uh, curiosity is getting to me. All right, I just turned it on, moved down just a little bit further. And let's go ahead and drop it down again. It's gonna be the last time I drop it down, maybe. Kinda get a little nervous dropping my camera down. That will be cool if it captures something interesting. Well, that's about as much as I want to keep my camera down there. So it's time to reel it up and I'm extremely excited and curious to see and review the footage when I get home. So I dropped it down for about three minutes in three different locations. So I'm bound to have picked up something, I hope. I saw a bunch of mullet swimming around where I was and then we know we caught some fish in the second two locations. So I'll get home, review that footage and put it on here and see what it shows I'm wearing some Costa polarized sunglasses right now I'm gonna put them on and see if y'all can 
observe these cow nose rays coming by. It's a whole fever of stingrays is what they call it. It's not, that's what I learned one day is a fever, not a school. So that's pretty cool. But look, check them out. Beautiful, graceful creatures there. Really good shark bait. But those are your cow nose rays because they're mouth. We've caught numerous of them on this pier previous years. My brother and I have. They're fun to fight, but we've always turned them back. A lot of times you can catch pompano under them because they stir up the sediment up below them. And the pompano and the whiting follow behind them eating all the ghost shrimp and sand fleas and clams they stirred up. But there they go. Pretty neat. But if we don't catch anything else, we're probably going to head out. Mom landed that really solid sheep's head. And then I landed that 12 inch flounder. It was undersized, so it had to go back. Dropping the GoPro camera down there was actually really cool. It's always neat to see what's below the water surface because you never know. Even though the water's clear, you don't know what's way on the bottom. So that was really neat. If you liked seeing that and want to see more, leave a comment and hit that like button. And then we can drop this camera down in more places and see what's below where we're fishing. I just think it's pretty interesting. But I appreciate y'all for watching. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. If you haven't subscribed, smash it at the end of this video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.